Welcome back to the GSMC Hockey Podcast, presented by the GSMC Sports Network. We're back with our second segment of the night, talking about the St. Louis Blues and their defensemen that they acquired a couple years ago in a trade with the Boston Bruins is out for this season. He is out. Uh, I'll just read the press release that the St. Louis Blues president of hockey operations and general manager Doug Armstrong put out today for Tori Krug has been diagnosed with pre-arthritic changes in his left ankle. The injury is a cumulative result of a bone fracture suffered earlier in his playing career. Krug will work to rehabilitate the injury through non-surgical interventions over the course of the next six to eight weeks. After the time, he will be reevaluated re-evaluated to determine whether surgery will be necessary. Krug is officially considered to be out indefinitely, and if surgery is required, he will be unavailable for the entirety of the 2024-25 season. Tori Krug, who was 33 years old, was originally signed by the Blues as a free agent on October 9, 2020. Last season, uh, the Michigan native dressed in 77 regular season games, posting 39 points, which included 35 assists and 32 penalty minutes across four seasons. With the Blues, Krug has recorded 146 points, which is which includes 124 assists and 159 154 penalty minutes in 255 regular season games. Overall, he has appeared in 778 career regular season games, including stints with Boston and St. Louis, totaling 483 points and 374 penalty minutes. Tory Krug is a huge, huge loss to the St. Louis Blues defense. If he does need surgery for this, which I would be shocked if he doesn't, uh, this th- this is a huge blow. And this is a 33 year old defenseman so if he needs surgery for this he may never play another game in the nhl and that's really sad uh because i mean he's like lightning in a bottle when he's on he's such a fantastic and such a fun player to watch and it just leaves such a hole for the st louis blues d uh this defense is old this defense is injury riddled this defense does not look good i when i was giving my when i was giving my season preview for the uh colorado avalanche i think on monday i talked about the st louis blues a little bit in there and how well when you look at the central the central is really good and then you look at the st louis blues and they got considerably worse this offseason so where does that put them with a team that already didn't make the playoffs last season there's nobody that's going to be able to replace Tory Krug and his production and what he does for defense uh, on this team right now. They have a bunch of old defensemen. They have Nick Letty, 33 years old, making $4 million for the next two years. Colm Pareko, 31 years old, making $6.5 million for the next six years. He signed that contract uh, so long ago um, and has regressed ever since. Tory Krug, who is now going to probably be out for the season and justin falk who is six and a half million dollars but 32 years old the rest of their defense has scott uh scott peronovich and uh pierre uh, pierre olivier joseph tyler tucker Corey shuenemann and ryan sutter is what their defense is uh, just four guys that don't move the needle or five guys that just don't move the needle in a direction that you want it to be moved into all of these guys just um, don't help out with the with the team that's you know the already lackluster defensive core. Uh, it's just they have what is that nine? They have nine defensemen that are making some big money on their roster right now, and none of them are particularly good. <laughs> that's a problem. And then when you look in their def- or when you look in, in in their prospect pool, they just drafted Adam Yerchek, who uh, it is no secret how low I am on Adam Yerchek as a prospect. He had one point coming off of a major injury, and we drafted him in the first round. Why? And we, uh, of course, I mean the St. Louis Blues. I have no ties with that team, but. Um... They also have Theo Lindstein, who they drafted last year. Uh, They just signed him to an entry-level deal. Other guys uh, that they have, like Lucas Fisher, who doesn't really move the needle uh, too much. Um, uh, Paul, uh, I mean, they just, yeah, they're they're lackluster at best on defense when you look at it. Uh, Colin Ralph, who they just got in the second round, is is pretty pretty solid. 
uh, yeah, it's just not that great. Their de- their 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 defense is, is is scary. And then when you look at their offense, uh, guys like Jordan Cairo, who has shown signs of regressing, Thomas Robert, Braden Shent, who is 32 years old now, uh, Pavel Bushnevich, who they just signed to a major extension at 29 years old, Brandon Saad, who's 31, showed signs of major regression. Uh, Radek Fasa, who is 30, showed signs of major regress- regression. And then, you know, they, they have other guys like Kasperi Kapanen and Alexi- Alexander Textier and Matthew Joseph, who just are bottom six guys. It's This team, this team's offseason was a worst case scenario, I might say. Uh, St. Louis is not going to be happy with this product. If you know anything about St. Louis sports is they hate when they aren't winning. Uh, me being a Cardinals fan, I completely understand that. The, 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 the city hates when St. Louis is bad. I have some bad news for that city. They're not going to be great. You're looking at the Central Division and you have... The Avalanche, who are going to be really good next season. The Dallas Stars, who we just got done talking about for a season preview, are going to be fantastic. You have the Nashville Predators, who probably won this offseason with the three-headed monster that they got on free agency. Brady Shea, Steven Stamkos, Jonathan Marcheso. Minnesota Wild, who have Kirill Kaprizov, one of the best play forwards in all, all of the NHL, and look to have gotten better this offseason. Uh, you have the Blackhawks, who have Connor Bedard and can always be really good because they have Connor Bedard. Um, the Utah Hockey Club who got Mikhail Sergachev and got uh, John Marino and got other pieces that help that 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 look like it's going to help this team win now. And then you have the St. Louis Blues who I mean, you look at this team or, and I forgot the one to pick Jets, who also, I mean, they took hits this offseason, but not not enough to completely fall from grace. They still have a Vesna, you know, the f- previous year's Vesna winning goaltender and a fantastic defense behind him. And then you look at the St. Louis Blues, who is the eighth team in this central division. And while well, you, you now lose Tory Krug, you... I mean, you haven't lost huge pieces, but all of your pieces are just getting older. And your defense does not look good. And you're still relying on a 31-year-old Jordan Bennington who hasn't reclaimed that success from the 2019 season when he uh, completely came out of nowhere and became uh, one of the best goaltenders overnight, seemingly. They have they have good prospects. Like, uh, Dalver Dvorsky, I really like. Um, that might be it. <laughs> uh, Dalver Dvorsky, Otto Stenberg are both pretty good prospects. Um, but other than that, I mean... Yeah, I, I talked about it. In the system, they don't have many defensive prospects. This team, this, it, I mean, it might be scary hour. Like, it, it, it honestly might, uh, not time to hit the big red button, sound the alarm bells, everything's going off, everything's going wrong in St. Louis. But when is? Uh, is? Is it just full rebuild mode in St. Louis? Is it time to just kind of cut ties with guys like Jordan Cairo, kind of look to sell at the deadline? Uh, Jordan Cairo is making a lot of money, so... I don't know if he's really the biggest candidate, but Brandon Saad, 31 years old, four and a half for the next two years, can definitely be a, a deadline sell. Erotic Fossa, you mean Nick Letty, could be a deadline sell move. Um, the other problem with the St. Louis Blues is like, who are you building around now for the future? Because I think that this team is not competitive enough to make a postseason. So who's that guy? Like when you started in like 2019, the guy was kind of like Colin Pareko and Vladimir Tarasenko. Um, and now, the you know, Vladimir Tarasenko is on his like fifth team since he's left uh, St. Louis. And Colin Pareko is still on the team, but doesn't have anybody around him in the defensive core and kind of has fallen off a good bit since that season. Jordan Bennington, the, it looks like a shell of his former self every time he uh, steps on the ice. This team would worry me if I was a Blues fan. I I, I think you got to just kind of buckle up for a while of uh, mediocrity because you're not building around anybody. You don't have – I mean, it's just not that impressive. And 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 last season they were stuck in purg- pur- pur- purgatory, right? They were the first team out of the playoffs last season. 
it's going to be difficult for the St. Louis. It, it, it really is. So we'll see what that looks like in the future. But that'll wrap it up for talking about Tori Krug being out for the season. When I come back for my third segment of the night, we'll be talking about Gavin McKenna and him playing in a U18 tournament and him not being at the summer showcase for the World Junior Classic. Looking for your daily fix of sports?